True story. A friend of mine had to have his car towed, and an Arab tow truck driver took him from Jerusalem to Gush Etzion. They had about 45 minutes in the car. My friend was in a good mood, and he wanted to level with the guy. And he starts to tell us, what, 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 do we, what do you think about this two-state solution? So the Arab guy looks at him, and he looks away, he looks back a couple times. He says, why would you want to do that to me? And my, my friend said, what do you mean? He said, why would you want to do that to me, to give me a two-state solution? Right now, if I get pulled over by an Israeli cop, he takes out his book, he writes me a ticket, or on a good day, maybe he'll say, I'll give me a warning and let me go. I go into a Arab territories. Policeman pulls me over. First he hits me on, on the hands with his stick. Then he demands money. And then he warns me. And what did I do? He fleeced me on the spot. Why do I want a Palestinian state? What does that mean? Who are we giving the power to? The same people that took power in Aza? Aza wasn't always a Hamas region. Aza was, there were 140,000 Arabs in Aza, Gaza, in 1948, when Israel became a state. 140,000 people. It's not 2 million, but it's still a nice little city, if you will, but it's not a city. It's a 40-kilometer strip of land. And so this two-state solution, you have to ask yourself, wait a minute, these Arabs, they don't seem to want it because I've heard this story over and over. I've talked to an Arab who works on my car and an Arab who, <laughs> who sews my clothes. They don't want a two-state solution. So my friend says to him, well, what's the problem with the two-state solution? You, you don't like the cops. He says, are you kidding? If I went and sat with all my friends right now and I said, would you want a two-state solution? All my friends would say, no way, give us the Jews now. We're going to the Jews. What does that tell you? about the, the level of society that the Arabs have to live with and the level of society that the Jews try to maintain. A man doesn't want his own country with his own culture and his own language and his own currency and his own legal system and his own police force and his own army. He doesn't want any of that. He wants a Jewish state to live in. You know, so we have to ask another question. <laughs> Who's pushing the two state? If the average Arab guy who wants to earn a living, raise a family, create for himself some wealth that he can have a decent old age. If they don't want their own people ruling over them, why would we, the Jewish people, or some of us, be pushing for a two-state solution? Especially Jews in America who are not even here. and Maybe they visit once a year. Who's pushing for that? Who's putting that out there? Who's grinding it up in the media mill? Who's repackaging it over and over and over? The day after October 7th, October 8th, you looked at all the editorial columns that were fully complete articles pushing the two-state solution and blaming the Jews, <laughs> the Jews for for the horrible atrocities that were done there. What kind of journalist puts out that? A corrupt one. Someone who's getting his pockets lined. 
Someone who doesn't care about truth at all. He's trying to make a buck because there's somebody else who has an agenda to push. And he's just a, a word pusher. So, you know, there's a big reckoning coming. And it's with the media. It's with aspects of the political society. It's with the judicial system. It's with the, our relationship with ourselves and with others. But, you know, if all that, <laughs> do your own survey. Ask the, any Arab you know. Do you want a two-state solution? If he does, better find out where he lives, who his friends are, who he does business with. Because everyone I've asked, they don't want it. And they must know something we don't know. And maybe it's time to learn from the people we're trying to help and ask them what they really want. God bless you all. Pesach's coming. Everybody's working hard. <laughs> Put on their work clothes and trying to scrub and clean and throw stuff away and make life new again. That's what Pesach does for us. It frees us from the physical world by fixing the physical world. We'll have more to say this week. God bless you all.